constantly morphing cybersecurity landscape of threats requires the European ecosystem to remain agile, vigilant, and adapt rapidly. ENISA, or the European Union Agency for Cybersecurity, plays a central role in that process, and as such, is, leading act is a leading actor in terms of cybersecurity and operationalization of cybersecurity strategy across Europe. I am happy to welcome Mr. Johan Lepasar, the Executive Director of ENISA. Sir, welcome to CyberSec, and the uh, is yours. Thank you very much. I also want to thank Vice President Hinas for uh, the very warm words uh, that he expressed towards the agency and for outlining the framework where we operate in the coming decades. Um, I'm also very honored uh, to have this opportunity to speak to you today in this foresight stream, which, of course, is something that we as uh, cybersecurity specialists take extremely seriously, uh, because that's part of uh, what the mission of the agency is, to, to have the foresight, to have the understanding what are the risks, but also the opportunities of the future. Now the future, as we know, is something that is not fixed, it's constantly in flux, it's dynamic. And because the agency is situated in Greece, uh, I uh, allow me to make a very short um, uh, stroll back to the history. In the past times, when the Greeks wanted to know what the future holds, they went to Delphi and they asked the oracles. And the oracles were the ones who had the foresight. They were the ones who were able to frame the future so that people could anticipate the risks and the opportunities. And with good foresight, you would be able to make sure that you could avoid the pitfalls and perhaps even with a little gift to the gods, change and shape the future. Uh, in the times of pandemic, of course, we can't go to Delphi, uh, but we do have good oracles, and Vice President Hinas, uh, amongst his colleagues, has already framed the future for us. He, they, uh, the Commission has already given us a clear guidance regarding into which direction should we look in order to prepare us better to anticipate the challenges and the risks. So the cybersecurity strategy, the security union strategy, and also the framework of the digital decade for Europe helps us a lot in order to uh, anticipate uh, what the future holds. And what I would like to do today, uh, I would like to just pick a uh, few strands from the uh, Europe's digital uh, decade framework. Um, and uh, use them as case studies in order to look at the risk and look at the opportunities. So the digital decade was put in place uh, by the Commission on 9th of March, and it holds four main pillars. So about the skills, it's about the infrastructure, it is about the private sector and businesses, and it's about the public sector. Uh, and I would like to take two out of the four, and I would like to start with the infrastructure parts. Resilient and strong infrastructure is crucial uh, when we talk about uh, the emergence of digital society. And we know that there are already developments which are not in the far-flung future, but wait for us already around the corner. It's 5G, 6G, Yesterday, I had a great opportunity to participate uh, in a meeting that discussed about quantum communication infrastructure. So these things are coming, and the question only is, what do we do in terms of understanding better the risks and the opportunities that are involved? 
The interesting thing about infrastructure is it, it, the architecture and the basic layout of infrastructure is quite resilient uh, when it comes to time. It doesn't change much. You can walk around Athens and still walk around the same routes that people 2,000 years ago used when they went from point A to point B. And as it is with physical infrastructure, the digital infrastructure has similar strengths. And we know that from the work that the agency has undertaken together with the Member States and Commission on the 5G. 5G is a new technology, but it's built as a new layer on top of the old layers about 3G, 4G infrastructure. So when we talk about resilient infrastructure, it's very important to understand what is the baseline. Is it a new virgin technology that is being applied on, on, on a virgin ground, or is it something which is an upgrade of an existing infrastructure? And what we see, of course, that quite a lot of incidents happen because of vulnerabilities in legacy systems. It's not so much the new part uh, which is uh, problematic, but it's the fact that we haven't looked into our past and we haven't understood what are the risks involved. And this is where NISA comes along and we can see that through the work that we do in compiling uh, sector specific or general threat landscapes, uh, or uh, risk assessments, uh, we can create a better understanding of what are the vulnerabilities uh, of our past systems. And this is essential when we uh, plan the deployment of new technologies. Um, thus, the uh, two new proposals that the uh, Vice President already outlined, the NIS2 review, uh, helps us because they strengthen and give better tools to agencies like ENISA in order to deal and take the knowledge that we get from the uh, incident reports and the vulnerability reports and use it uh, to understand better the risks that are involved. So this was about the risks, what about the opportunities? And uh, I would like to use the, the final pillar of the digital decade uh, framework. Uh, to discuss about the opportunities. Um, now, public service and digitalization of public service is an important challenge. Um, but if we look at the uh, issues involved, or if we look at the plethora of services that the public sector offers, the most important service is trust. Trust underpins the way that our society functions. It is underpinning the daily transactions, the information exchange, the partnerships, the collaboration uh, that take place. And as in the physical world, so trust is important also in the digital ecosystem. And why trust matters in cybersecurity? Uh, if you look at the recent ENISA threat landscape, the three most important cyber threats are malware, web-based attacks, and phishing attacks. Now imagine a cyber ecosystem whereby you could easily uh, differentiate between trustworthy actors, authenticated actors, and non-authenticated actors who you would not trust so much. It would be much more difficult for malicious actors to use phishing attacks via emails if you could differentiate between the emails from sources you trust and the sources you don't trust. It would be much more difficult for the malicious actors to use botnets if machines would have to authenticate themselves. And this is something which is now missing. I don't say that we do not have tools in place in order to use authentication in the digital space. We do. But one thing that we miss is a framework which would involve everybody in the ecosystem. People, machines, devices. And this is the promise that the European digital identity holds. We could build a framework which would make it easier to build trust in the digital ecosystem and thereby 
build a much more cyber secure and resilient digital Europe. So cybersecurity is about learning from the past. It is about constant adaptation and preparation for the future. By trying to anticipate the risks and opportunities, we are preparing ourselves better to mitigate any possible threats and utilize the possibilities and opportunities and eventually shape a future that is best suited for our needs. Thank you very much.